In this video, I am going to share my opinion about the new Napoleon movie directed by Ridley Scott. I think many many reviews have been made about this movie in this short time since its premiere by people who know much more about filmmaking than me, so I will just quickly assess what I think about it. So, as you probably know, the movie has generated mixed reviews so far. Ever since its first trailer was released, historians have been tearing Ridley Scott's work apart because of the historical inaccuracies. I, however, was hopeful, inaccuracies or not, because I really like the historical epics Scott has made in the past. The Gladiator, of course, has become a timeless classic, and I am one of those people who love the Kingdom of Heaven, or be it, I only saw the director's cut, and I have heard many times that the theatrical cut is not good, and the movie only makes sense if you see the director's cut, and I happen to like the last duel as well. I was very sad that it was so unsuccessful and I find it a very underrated movie. About the historical inaccuracies, I had no high expectations. I know that Scott's works and most big historical epic movies in general are full of historical inaccuracies, so I didn't expect anything else. So, first of all, I would like to say what I liked about the movie. The strongest points of the movie are certainly the battle scenes, and this is coming from a person who doesn't really care about battle scenes, but here they are just spectacular. Really, they must be among the best battle scenes I have ever seen. I didn't even care about those things that didn't happen in real life during the battles. I found them so impressive. For this, it is really worth it to watch the movie in the cinema. Other things about the movie also look great. The sets, the visuals, the costumes, they all look great. The cinematography is impressive as well. Then I have to mention that there are several strong acting performances in the movie. There are exceptions, which I will mention later, but most actors do their jobs well. I have to say that the end, probably the last 15 to 20 minutes, is probably the best in the movie. From Napoleon's return from exile, through the Waterloo battle, the scenes with Wellington, till the end, that is probably the best part of the movie. And then, let's see what I didn't like about the movie, which is, sadly, a much longer list. So, first of all, I have to say that while many people, especially historians, started to complain about the movie after the first trailer was released, I myself started my complaint much earlier. Ever since the casting was announced, I had problems. Joaquin Phoenix as Napoleon? Great actor, surely one of the best nowadays, but is he really suitable for this role? Is he not too old now? But then I was like, okay, filmmakers nowadays have makeup, even have CGI techniques now to make someone look younger, even much younger than their age. Okay, let's see. But then it was announced that Jodie Kummer would play Josephine. And I was like, Phoenix as Napoleon and Kummer as Josephine? How? Phoenix could be her father, while it is a well-known, even famous fact about the couple that she was several years older than him. And sorry, I really don't want to be a nitpicky history nerd, but in Napoleon's story, it plays an important role that she was older. It is an essential point in their relationship dynamic and also in their divorce. But then Jolly Comer withdrew and I was like, okay, now Scott has a chance to reconsider this casting. And then who did he choose next? Vanessa Kirby, who again, could almost be Phoenix's daughter. What Scott was doing here resembles that very bad old Hollywood habit of casting couples with a big age gap, a middle-aged man and a very young, fresh-faced woman. I think I don't have to elaborate on why I found this a bad habit. We would think Hollywood is over that now, but then there is always someone like Ridley Scott who comes and does it again. And it is not even fiction or rom-com or something for which he decided to cast an older man and a young woman. No, it is a historical drama with a historical couple with a woman six years older than the man. And then he just casts a woman 14 years younger than the man. But then there was still some chance that it was just the casting because 
I thought maybe these actors just happen to be the best and most talented actors for these roles and age could be corrected with makeup and CGI. But that didn't happen either. Napoleon looks much older than Josephine from day one and we also don't really see them age through the movie despite the fact that, and it is also shown with dates written on screen, 20 years pass through the movie. And this age thing is bad not just when we look at them as a couple, but also when we look at Napoleon only. We just can't see the youthful ambition and energy that drove him early in his career because he starts his career as a man well in his middle ages in the movie. Which is a bit weird for a career starter, especially for someone who is supposed to be a genius. And after seeing this movie, this casting choice seems even weirder because I just can't help but think that Phoenix's acting is not good in the movie. It is just not good. And I have no idea how that can be with an actor as phenomenal as him. Makes me ask whether it is his fault or if it happened because Scott did not give good instruction to his leading actor. I don't know. But he has an expressionless face, he shows no emotion and no reaction to anything except for his sudden baby tantrums, which are just so random. While I think Vanessa Kirby's acting performance is much better, I must still say that the couple's scenes are probably the worst parts of the movie. They are just painfully bad. The two have no chemistry, we don't get to know why they are together, and their scenes and dialogues are just so bad that they are painful to watch and hear. Their scenes are so awkward, so cringy. Honestly, who wrote these scenes and dialogues? Yeah, James. The other parts of the movie, which are not about the couple, but about Napoleon and his military career, are certainly much better. But still not good. Not good at all. Even though the movie is very long, it still feels like it is not long enough to tell the story it wanted to tell. The plot feels very hasty and rushed, the story is incohesive and incoherent. One thing happens after the other without the movie explaining how this thing could come after that thing. But at the same time, the movie fails to draw in the viewer properly to make them very interested in the things that happen on screen to be emotionally involved. Napoleon is neither the genius he should be on screen, nor an interesting character as a human being. And for these reasons, the movie gets quite dull sometimes. It is a movie that is both too long and not long enough. The storyline and the scenes feel like we see bits of a whole and not the whole movie. That half of it just vanished in the cutting room. This might very well be the case because Ridley Scott has already announced that a 4 hour long version of the movie will come to a streaming platform. So about 90 minutes will be added to the movie we could see in the cinema. And we all know that in the case of Kingdom of Heaven, it was quite similar. The shorter, theatrical cut was torn apart by critics, while the longer, director's cut is a generally appreciated movie. So maybe Scott just made the same error with Napoleon too, and maybe the longer version will be a good movie. But then it raises the question, why can't he put a good version in the cinema? Then I would also like to say a few things about the historical accuracy or inaccuracy of the movie. Now, I know that the movie has been heavily criticized by historians for its inaccuracies, but I must say, I don't think the movie is terribly inaccurate. I mean, what do we expect exactly? It is a historical epic, are those often more accurate than this one? No. Should they be? I don't know, that is up to everyone personally to judge, but to me, if I compare this movie with Gladiator, 1492, Kingdom of Heaven, The Last Duel, or even Braveheart, and other famous historical epics, Napoleon is not very inaccurate. And there are several reasons why a good historical movie should contain some inaccuracies for the sake of drama. As I also mentioned in my CC review video, some inaccuracies are just inevitable in movies. Here in Napoleon, you have to compress the lifetime into 
two to three hours and make a good movie out of it with a story arc with interesting but not too many characters, dramatic scenes. You just have to be inaccurate here and there. Of course, it is very personal what inaccuracies we tolerate. It is different for each of us. It depends on our personal tastes, preferences, our historical knowledge about certain historical heirs and figures, and our personal emotions and attachment to them. To me, most of the inaccuracies in Napoleon are within the limits. The only inaccuracy that bothered me very much is the terribly inaccurate casting and the inaccurate portrayal of the whole relationship of Napoleon and Josephine, but otherwise I was fine. I don't know about you, but whether Napoleon attended Marie Antoinette's execution or whether he had a conversation with Wellington in real life or not, these don't matter to me. Those two inaccuracies in the movie are, in my opinion, the perfect examples of good historical inaccuracy for the sake of drama. They don't distort history terribly, but they both add good and important dramatic elements to the movie. But, like I said, this is personal, and inaccuracies that don't matter to me may matter to many other people. I also noticed that in this historical accuracy issue, it matters a lot what era, events, and historical figures we talk about. While people may be extremely enraged if Diana smiles at certain moments in a historical interview in The Crown when she didn't smile at those points in real life, people will obviously care less about how many times, let's say, Ragnar Lodbrok smiles in a Viking scene. People tend to be much more enraged about the inaccuracies in a movie that is about eras and people that are closer to us in time, that have more influence on today, and people know more about and feel more emotions about. That is what filmmakers should understand, I think. Ridley Scott may be surprised about the historian rage he gets now, when he got much less than this for Gladiator, even though that movie was much more inaccurate and fictional than Napoleon. But he and others must understand that it matters a lot what and who you make your movie about. Napoleon is a very, very well-known historical figure. He evokes a lot of emotions to this day, from admiration to hate, and he and his era are quite famous even for people who don't care a lot about history. And you have to understand that in such a case, you will not get away with historical inaccuracies as easily as you would with a movie about a, let's say, much lesser known medieval French general. So this movie was a great disappointment to me and this was probably the first time in my life that I wanted to leave the cinema halfway through the movie. But I am also interested in the longer version to see if that makes Napoleon a better movie. But if you want to watch something good about Napoleon, I recommend the 1987 miniseries Napoleon and Josephine or the 2002 miniseries Napoleon, both are much better than this movie.